Hello everyone, welcome back to yet another tutorial. Now in this video, we are going to look at how to install the MySQL server. So as usual, let's work it out Open the browser, Google it, saying that download, okay, there you go, download MySQL, okay. So things are pretty straightforward. Just click on the first link here, as you can see here, just click on this link. Uh, it's uh, mysql.com slash downloads. I'm going to produce this links in the description either the way just Navigate to this part of it. Okay, and then scroll down and click on this um, Mysql uh, community downloads just click on this link. Okay, so let's do that click on it. It should take a page where it gives a lot of different version and since we are only interested in working with windows machine at this stage so just let's click on this software uh, link all right there you go and here i'm going to select this particular option the reason is because uh, it has all the necessary ingredients for me to work to perform the required installation and mine is a 64 bit machine even though for 64 this does work Okay, let's click on the download and uh, just say no thanks. I'm gonna start my download. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna save it in a desktop and have pretty cool, fast internet. Takes hardly less than 8 to 10 seconds to download the 500 MB of software. So as you can see, it's already done. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so I'll go to my Windows desktop and there just gonna click on this double click run and here uh, let it let it surface okay sure why it's taking such a long time okay it's uh, asking for a series of pop-ups just say yes to all of them okay now as you can see here you have different versions one is the developer default if you set developer default these are certain software that gets installed see here okay and you can just scroll down to the page and find more of it okay just gonna scroll i'm just gonna do that anyways so yes here there you go router mysql bench and studio oh, that's a perfect highlight okay and then if you can see here many more of it now either you can go with the options that are provided by default with few with, with, with the setup or I'm going to say custom where I have the flexibility to choose what I need. So I'm going to select with custom because that's what I want to have a flexibility of choosing what I require. So documentation is key for me because that's the first thing that I always do. Um, I read the read the software and then work it out. Okay. So that's how that's how I always work it out. Then I'm gonna work on the connector with ODBC. I'm gonna explain to you eventually in my tutorials why I why I've selected this option. Then in the applications, obviously I need a workbench. Just like how we saw in Oracle installation, right? After the installation, we saw how with the help of SQL developer we kind of connected that to the product, right? So uh, I've selected that. And as you can see for SQL. Visual Studio, it's asking that as a user, it's your duty to explicitly install as I'm not going to provide that in the installation path. For Shell, I'm going to select it and Router, I'm not interested at this stage. And the server, this is the main boss of it. I'm going to select this server. As you can see, it's clearly written as 64 bits here. Yeah, okay. 6464. Cool. Now I'm gonna select next, and now as you can see, it's it's in stage for ready to install, and just just check this part where it says that uh, everything gets ready once I select the executed here. There you go. As you can see, it's installing, installing, installing. So I'm gonna pause this video. Once this is completed, I'm gonna resume back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there you go. Um, the installation has been completed. Let's click on the next icon. Okay, there you go. And now it's asking to ready to configure. Click 
click on next just make sure that you select the development okay so this option now you have to decide whether are you going to convert your existing PC to a server if so second is your option or you are dedicatedly going to install MySQL nothing else that's your third option or the first option that I'm that I'm going to select because I'm going to install many applications and I'm going to utilize SQL for my activity so that's the one that I'm going to use it and this is the port please make a note of it somewhere in your notepad or in a sticky notes uh, do not forget that so click on next and I'm going to select the first option which is the default for the password encryption and I'm not going to select any strong password as such because this is just on my local machine so I just typed as admin123 now that's the username and password for root now you can also create your own custom users what I'm going to do I'm going to click on add and I'll say that username is pro x that's me okay and this guy has I'll give the respective privileges for pro x I'll say let him let me give him the complete privileges db admin okay and authentication mode is through mysql not through windows authentication and the password is admin123 admin123 okay there you go see you have pro x you can add again another user and this time I can say that uh, I'll say db designer okay so pro x db designer there's another user and I'm going to say admin123 three okay that's it now click on next and here this is an instance name you know see if you can see windows service name now where do I get that type together windows and R as you can see there's a prompt that opens up and here you say win uh, services dot msc now this gets opened here now here search for mysql okay uh, sort, sort out by name and search for mysql do you guys see anything here no right now that's where this guy will come into picture okay so just keep a note of it I'm gonna click on next and by the way check this box okay check this box start the mysql server at system start -up. I'm gonna execute it okay as as itself it says this may take a long time I'm gonna stop the video so I not stop the video pause the video and resume back once it's completed okay thank you all right guys welcome back as you can see that the execution have been completed uh, there's a small tweak into that unfortunately my system ended up restarting by itself due to some memory leaks I had to reinstall the whole steps from the beginning unfortunately and during the step I did not select the user creation uh, and hence you would have seen one option that's missing called as creation of users that's something that I've kind of did not select it for the second time um, unfortunately not sure why while I was recording this soft, uh, recording this video the system went on a crash so anyways that being said the installation has been completed now let's do one thing let's refresh this guy okay this button and see and just observe if there is any change in here okay so now these are the okay just uh, these are the things that starts with m see if anything gets added here okay so i'm just going to refresh it now okay there it added here see it added here called mysql i hope let me remove this and i hope you can see it it got added here uh, <coughs> and when uh, while i was giving tutorials on oracle and see that its oracle is anyways over here as well so uh, if you can see it here yeah that's about it's here it's oracle okay and they are in somehow they are in manual stage not sure why um, but anyways this is in running state as you can see this is in running state which is good okay it's an automatic and running state it's exactly what I wanted I'm gonna finish it next and I'm going to say start MySQL workbench after this setup. Okay, finish it. Okay, you can always uh, you can always uh, start the servers. I'm just going to show you how to start the Oracle one. Uh, see, this is anyways manual. I'm going to click it. Say that start. 
if i do that the services of oracle database should start in a similar way you can double click on this and you can stop disable manual do whatever you want okay that's what it says that windows services okay now while that is in progress and now this is our work sql workbench as you can see by by default it has given with this uh, username which is root and the port is 3306 that anyways you are aware of it now double click on this and it will ask for password uh, since i had already logged in um, there is an option to check box saying that save the password in vault since i had already logged in once it has automatically taken up or else it would actually ask for the uh, something like this say yeah passwords here you supply the username click on this password and store it in vault and then you say click on test connection and then okay <coughs> that's how it works okay since i've already done that before it it has aut automatically taken me inside it okay now let me shut down this service and show you whether it will work or not okay so for example i'll go to this my sql okay and i'm going to stop it okay now see it let's see if this works see it's not able to even connect oh see no connection established see here can you guys see this no connection established not available okay so see server status stopped which is good okay server status has stopped which is good now i'm going to enable it start okay and i'm going to make it as manual the only reason is because unnecessarily it will be it will be just kicking off in the background i don't want that so even the oracle as well i'll just going to make it manual see everything is in manual so that i control it okay now just double click on this now as you can see the server is up and running see okay now there is one more small thing before we end up the session the thing is that uh, right click on the my computer select properties and here select advanced system settings advanced system settings again my computer right click advanced system settings and here again under advanced select environment variables okay here we need to configure the path of the uh, my sql server okay so here under system variables select this path okay go to the location where it has been installed my sql and here select the server not the shell server bin copy this uh double click and new paste it okay 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 all okay 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 that's good now open the command prompt and type my sql i find i find sorry dash dash version so that should give you the my sql community version which you can see it now you can log in here as well by saying my sql minus u uh, root minus uh, p p is for password and say admin 123 okay as you can see you have logged in successfully as well okay and you can exit by saying exit so that's about it for the installation of the my sql i hope you had a great learning and uh, see you guys in the uh, next tutorial okay sorry this is so quick mic too many syntaxes too many programming language that's that's what it happens <laughs> all right guys that's it and i hope you had a great learning see you guys in the next tutorial thank you